सो टुडे इज ऑस्पिशियस डे ऑफ श्री श्री राधाष्टमी एंड सो एज आई सेड वी एक्चुअली कैनॉट स्पीक अबाउट द ग्लोरीज ऑफ श्रीमती राधा रानी सो बट वी विल डू सो only to purify ourselves there was an incident where uh, there was radhashtami lecture by shri prabhu <laughs> radhashtami lecture by shri prabhu you know what happened that lecture shri prabhu gave a maybe like 25 minutes something lecture only speaking about krishna 23 minutes about krishna then finally he said this krishna who is so great is after radharani <laughs> that's it and there's a radhashtami lecture so um we actually in fact another time um, in i think south africa two ladies right they wanted to indian ladies so they were insisting to shri prabhupad please uh, tell us something about uh, rasleela gopi bhav you know how the gopis used to love krishna so prabhupad used to you know gently you know uh, go around the topic and not speak about it so they were insisting keep on persisting and insisting so finally prabhupad said you may be qualified i am not qualified to speak you may be qualified to hear so that is the position of shrimati radharani of course shri prabhupad is more than qualified to speak about her but the problem is that we are not qualified to understand shrimati radharani and actually um, for this i mean for today i would just like to take this as the topic that we don't understand shrimati radharani and a classic uh, incident happened last year we were uh, doing book distribution you know um, during the dipavali expo so i think uh, one nishita mathur ji was there so there was this lady i was not there at the time at the stall and mathur ji was there and one lady came and you know mathur ji was showing her you know these are some books here you can take and she showed the krishna book so she looked at the book no 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 i don't want this book is that no <laughs> i don't want this because uh, this this radha and krishna no 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 i just had a problem with my husband you know going after another woman i don't want this kind of uh, <laughs> so i don't want this kind of books uh, in my home this is i just came out of it i don't want to go into it again and she left <clears throat> now this is the problem that we think or many people think the shrimati radharani's relationship with krishna is something like as immoral as a you know unchaste woman or man you know this kind of extra marital affair so that is not at all the case actually so what is unchaste hmm? what are we actually jivar swarup hoy krishner nitya das mama evamsha jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana mama evamsha krishna says that everyone is my part and parcel chaitanya mahaprabhu also said we are all part and parcel and servant of krishna so to serve krishna is actually chastity hmm? there is a beautiful verse by shukadev goswami shrimad bhagavatam 2420 triya pate yagya pate praja pate dhiyam pate loka pate dhara pate ंगीडरिजेंट the controller of all intelligence the proprietor of all planets spiritual and material and the supreme incarnation on the earth the supreme all in all be merciful be merciful upon me so here the lord is addressed as pati so many times eight i think eight times so the real pati our real um, husband actually we are all female by nature spiritually speaking not materially spiritually female hmm. because we are to be enjoyed by krishna prakriti and purusha in sanskrit purusha means male prakriti means female and we are all prakriti bhagavad gita krishna says um, we are para prakriti 7th chapter 5th verse aparyam dutasvanyam vidhyame prakritim param 
we are superior energy of krishna this material world is inferior energy of krishna so we are energy and krishna is the energetic the owner of all the energies if i have something if i own something that is meant for my enjoyment so similarly krishna owns us we are his property so we are to be enjoyed by krishna so prakriti means to be enjoyed and purusha means the male means the enjoyer so in spiritual um, terms we are actually prakriti now we have a problem we want to be purusha we want to compete with the lord we want to be the supreme lord as much as possible we want to be the controller from young we are taught how to become top you know first rank this that and you know even in the you know top successful top 50 what is it um 30 what is that forbes 50 list forbes 100 list 30 list what is that most richest everything most we want to be the highest best we want to be the lord basically because the lord is the best actually but this is a competition with the lord so for time and memorial since time and memorial we have been doing this so we are trying to be purusha the enjoyer and prakriti the enjoyed has to be inferior to the purusha for it to be enjoyed so this material world which is also prakriti apara prakriti we are para prakriti and material world is apara or inferior nature we are superior nature of krishna superior energy of krishna so because we wanted to be purusha then he krishna created another prakriti which is inferior to us so that in comparison we can be the superior and be the enjoyer that's why there is a material world and how is this inferior to us because we have life the material world does not have material elements don't have life of their own so in this way we may try to dominate we are put here and there are trillions and gazillions others are living entities who are also having the same stupid desire and we are all put to here so this is actually unchaste here we may want to be morally yes morally one has to be yes as a wife has to be a chaste wife to the husband that is morality yes but any relationship in this material world is actually a departure from our original relationship with krishna any relationship based on the bodily platform is a departure from our original relationship of jivar swarup hoy ne krishner nitya das so that departure is um, unchaste because if a wife departs from the husband that is unchaste so who is our real pati krishna is our real pati so <clears throat> any relation if we think that anybody else is related to us on the bodily platform actually everybody is related to us through krishna through krishna like they say universal brotherhood this is possible through the universal fatherhood of krishna if we don't accept krishna says 14th chapter 4th verse what did he say aham bija pradah pita i am the seed giving father of all living entities sarva yoni shukunteya sambhavan murtaya sambhavantiya tasam brahma mahad yonir aham bija pradah pita it should be understood that all species of life or son of kunti are made possible by birth in this material nature and that i am the seed giving father so if he is the father then we are you know we are all one family vasudhaiva kutumbakam that means this whole planet whole world has one family that is possible if we accept god as father but otherwise if we have if we think that we have any other relationship with anyone in this world that is a departure from our chaste position now then why is it there the rule that you know a wife has to be chaste to the husband and you know we have so many rules in fact you know marriage ties you know marriage vow vivaha yagya that is that is one but even friendship one should not be a traitor you know these are moral principles right then what about these then see these moral principles are an adjustment by krishna always remember the varnashram system 
the regulative principles that we have are still sense gratification but regulated so that we can don't go unrestrained but within the purview or the boundaries of Krishna's instruction because we have tendency for sense gratification. Huh? So Krishna says, okay, dharma viruddha kamosmi bharatarshabha. Uh, lust, which is not contrary to religious principles, that is a representation of me. So please follow in that manner. And what is that? Within marriage ties and for procreation also within that. So that is aviruddha kama, dharma aviruddha kama. So in other words, we have, this is the verse actually, 11, 5, 11. Shramad Bhagavatam. Shramad Bhagavatam. Loke vyavaya mishamadya seva nityahi jantor nahitatra chodana vyavasthitis teshu vivaha yajna suragrahai rasu nivrittirishta. In this material world, the conditioned soul is always inclined to sex, meat eating, and intoxication. Therefore, religious scriptures never actually encourage such activities. Although the scriptural injunctions provide for sex through sacred marriage, for meat eating through sacrificial offerings, and for intoxication through the acceptance of ritual cups of wine, such ceremonies are meant for the ultimate purpose of renunciation. Pravritti resha bhutanam nivrittistu mahaphala. So these are there, meant ultimately for renunciation. Because, you know, eventually brahmachari grahastha vana prasa sanyas. The ultimate purpose, Purpose is not to unrestrictedly have sex with every single woman. Okay, one woman. Same for the woman, one man. Of course, Vedic culture has, you know, polygamy allowed. And that is also under dharma. But in Kali Yuga, forget it. Nobody can do. Even one wife is very difficult already. <laughs> Let's be very honest. So, <clears throat> so, this is the vow. So that at least we don't slip away to unrestricted um, illicit and um, adharmic life. But the ultimate purpose is that eventually we give, a, give even that up. That's why it is said here. Indriya siendriya syarthe ragad vesho vyavasthito tayor navasham agad che tauhyasya paripanthino Chapter 3, text 34 of Bhagavad Gita. There are principles to regulate attachment and aversion pertaining to the senses and their objects. One should not come under the control of such attachment and aversion because they are stumbling blocks on the path of self-realization. So there are rules like this. Say, for example, marriage. There are rules meant for controlling us. But we cannot rely that, okay, now that I'm married, now I'm safe. No. Just don't depend on the rule also. That is a guardrail. That's all. It's not that when you go on the staircase, the guardrails are there for you to not fall off. But if you climb down the staircase on the guardrails, <laughs> then you will fall. You have to climb now on the staircase. And the guardrail is just to keep you away from keep you from falling. So these are guardrails. But our path is Krishna consciousness. Uh, that is our real thing. So to regulate our sense gratification and make us a little more chaster than we than we are. If I would like to, if I would put it that way. So, become better than complete prostitute. At least, you know, <laughs> become, because our mind is actually like a prostitute. Let's, let's be honest. Sometimes people find us harsh. Hey, boy, what, what did you think? 626. <laughs> From wherever the mind wanders due to its flickering and unsteady nature, one must certainly withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self. So, this is the whole yoga process to control our unchaste mind. And Arjuna said it's very difficult. The mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate and very strong, O Krishna. And to subdue it, I think, is more difficult than controlling the wind. So, we are restless. This restlessness is unchastity. If there is a word like that. Opposite of chastity. 
So there is another verse. What is that? Five six four. This one. And I think five six. Yeah, five six four. Nityam dadati kamasya chidram tam anuyeraya ha yogi na krita maitrasya patyurja ye vapumschali. An unchaste woman is very easily carried away by paramours. Paramour means you know what? A man other than the husband is a paramour. Extramarital affair, basically. An unchaste woman is very easily carried away by paramours, and it sometimes happens that her husband is violently killed by her paramours. If the yogi gives his mind a chance and does not restrain it, his mind will give facility to enemies like lust, anger, and greed, and they will doubtlessly kill the yogi. This is very, very strong comparison of our mind to a prostitute. Now we are actually like one, a prostitute, because we are departed from Krishna and we are not interested at all. What are we doing? So we are actually unchaste. And so-called marriage and all this is to okay. Let's become a little bit better. Okay, stay with one, and then execute religious duties. Become Krishna conscious and become chaste to the Supreme Lord, which is our actual chaste. To come back. So these are transition phases where from complete rascal to becoming a complete devotee. There is a transition phase. So these rules, moral principles, are just in the transition phase. But we should not say think that those are the benchmarks of morality. They are not. The benchmark of morality is to obey Krishna. That is benchmark. That is Mahabharat, Yudhishthir Maharaj. He wanted to be Satyavan. You know, always speak honestly. But Krishna asked him to lie. He refused. Later, he go, he saw hell for an hour before he went back to Godhead. He saw hell. This is the reason. Whereas Arjuna, he was very moral in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita. Oh, I will not kill my enemy. Even if they kill me unarmed, I will not protest. Yadimam apratikaram. What is that? 145. Two times he says. One, 135 and 145. Yadimam apratikaram ashastram shastrapanaya. Dhartarashtra rane hanyus tanmek shemataram bhavet. See how moral he is. Better for me if the sons of Dhritarashtra, weapons in hand, were to kill me unarmed and unresisting on the battlefield. He is prepared to die. Let me let them kill me. I don't care. I will not kill them. See how moral. And he was considering many things. Like, you know, if all the men die, then all the women become loose. And they will become, you know, dushta. Means prostitutes. And then there will be unwanted children, progeny. And then that will be the destruction of all dharma. In the families in the future and i will be the cause of it so he was considering so much forethought still krishna said kashmalam idam vishame samupasthitam. <laughs> where did this contamination come upon you how is this contamination how is morality contamination arjuna's morality in the first chapter was the top notch of morality in the material world nobody if an enemy comes, even if one's relative, one will kill. If the not just an ordinary relative, you know, whole life they planned against the Pandavas, these Kauravas. Not like you know the one accident or some misunderstanding. No, no. From day one, from the from the time the Duryodhan was born, he was planning <laughs> how to kill the Pandavas. That was his. That was the kind of family they had. So it's not even considered. What is a family? So he should have not even thought twice before killing. Actually, Shastra also says, Atatai means aggressor. One who is an aggressor, one must kill him immediately. Hatvaitan Atatai Naha. Atatai means aggressor. He says, Sin will overcome us if we slay such aggressors. Therefore, it is not proper for us to kill the sons of Dhritarashtra and our friends. What would we gain, O Krishna, husband of the goddess of fortune, and how could we be happy? By killing our own kinsmen. How could we be happy? That was his center point. Not whether what, what makes Krishna happy. That is the unchastity there. That is the immorality there. How could we be happy? According to Vedic injunctions, there are six kinds of aggressors. A poison giver. One who sets fire to the house. One who attacks with deadly weapons. 
one who plunders riches one who occupies another's land and one who kidnaps a wife the kauravas did all these things not just one all all of the above that was kauravas so they should be killed without any any thought hmm. but arjuna was so forbearing so tolerant that he was ready to excuse them ah, i will go and beg i don't i don't really need this kingdom and then krishna chastised him because ultimately he was not able to um what is that uh, discern what is the correct path of action for himself and therefore arjuna said i surrender to you he said on one side as a kshatriya if anybody is challenging i must fight that is my dharma whoever it is like you know in rama and ram love and kush you know so this kind of even if it is a one one's own family member one should fight if it is dharma like prala then hiranyakashipu he did not compromise prala did not compromise for dharma i have to stand even if my father is i should actually obey my father but my father is against so i will have to stand by dharma i can't go with my father if my father is going to be like that oh you cannot chant the name of god i am sorry so that is chastity not that my father said no one chant i must be obedient to my father no mata pita guru daivam this is common quote of indians mata pita guru daivam what happened to daivam ha huh? huh? everybody else is coming from daivam only from the lord so <clears throat> so that is the chastity so we have to not depart from krishna consciousness so that is um, primary so in the, in the bhagavad gita what krishna said basically the whole conclusion of that was arjuna's acceptance karishye vachanam tava i will do whatever you say this is chastity when he said that krishna stopped speaking the next five verses are sanjay glorifying bhagavad gita krishna no more speaking anymore finish krishna is like done done and dusted so the, the whole point of talking bhagavad gita is to make arjuna surrender to what krishna's desire was so that is chastity even if it be where is the morality in arjuna's killing his family members where is the morality of the gopis running away from their family husbands and children and elders and running and you know uh, what is that dancing with krishna where is the morality in all these things so many examples i can give may mundane if in from a mundane view point there is no morality there but it is this is actually morality transcendental morality we have original morality we have gone away i mean if we think that our father and everything family members are so important then our father is waiting krishna is waiting don't we have any you know feeling for that and you know how he is waiting you see asmin asmin he haiva bhave bhave madun mukha ityashayat vakyantam nartito asmi sadagnyavat krishna gave up hope on us but still he is hoping and he doesn't need us still he is hoping for us to turn back to him he lost so much hope on us that he calls himself a fool for waiting for us to turn back to him he did not call us fool he said in bhagavad gita you are murkha you know mudha vimudha and all this but finally krishna is saying i am actually vimudha i am a fool for waiting for you to come back to me you see what he said for so long hope had me dancing like a fool agnyavat agnya means no gyanam agnya fool for so long hope had me dancing like a fool thinking perhaps in this lifetime or this or this or this that means in this lifetime or this lifetime or this life every life is waiting for us maybe this lifetime he will come back to me in this lifetime he will come back to me like a fool i was waiting dancing oh this life not just waiting and you know maybe yeah maybe yeah 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 there no no he is dancing already but then after that at the end of life instead of chanting krishna's name chant some rascal nonsense and then become again hog and then he parmatma is coming and sitting in the hog's body and waiting huh? don't we have any feeling for that where is the morality we have left him where is the morality there 
where is the chastity where is the obedience where is the gratitude and we are talking about morality and radha krishna has shown okay so <clears throat> now let's come to um who is the most chaste woman we have examples like many chaste women um savitri satyavan and we have that this verse you know what is that name i don't know name is also not given here what is that ushthi viprera ramani pativrata shiromani pati lage koila veshar seva stambhila suryar gati jiyailo mrita pati tushta koila mukhya tinu deva the wife of a brahmana suffering from leprosy manifested herself as the topmost of all chaste women by serving a prostitute to satisfy her own husband she does stop the movement of the sun brought her dead husband back to life and satisfied the three principal demigods brahma vishnu and maheshwar what is the story the aditya puran markandeya puran and padma puran tell about a brahmana who was suffering from leprosy but had a very chaste and faithful wife despite having this what he did he desired to enjoy the company of a prostitute ungrateful rascal of the highest order this fellow so called brahman and therefore his wife went to her to the prostitute and became her maid servant just to draw her attention for his service she is so you know involved in the service of her husband that if the, my husband is going to be happy with this prostitute let me serve her and bring her for him for his satisfaction which wife will think like this huh? but that kind of pativrata pativrata shiromani anything for the husband when that leper the sinful son of a brahmana saw the chastity of his wife he finally abandoned his sinful intentions while coming home however he touched the body of markandeya rishi markandeya rishi is a great brahmachari you know unwavering brahmachari who does cursed him to die at sunrise because of her chastity the woman was very powerful therefore when she heard about the curse she vowed to stop the sunrise because of her strong determination to serve her husband the three deities namely brahma vishnu and maheshwar were very happy and they gave her the benediction that her husband would be cured and brought back to life this example is given here and to emphasize that a devotee should engage himself exclusively for the satisfaction of krishna without personal motives that will make his life successful so actually he died so she vowed the sun will not rise and by her mystic power because of her chastity she so much mystic power gandhar is another example so much sunrise could not could be stopped i mean look at the power so this is chastity so devotee should be similarly chaste that is the um, lesson from chaitanya mahaprabhu is speaking these things you know to give example how a devotee must be chaste to krishna anything what is the aashleshava padaratam pinashtuma madarshanan marmahatam karotu va yatha tatha va vidadhatu lampato mat prana nathas tu sevana paraha no matter what krishna does whether he embraces or tramples me under his feet he is still my lord without any exception not that he trample my feet uh, trample me under his feet so he is nonsense what kind of god is he no whatever he does or he never comes before me at all still he is my lord so that is chastity <clears throat> anything so topmost of all chaste women we can see from history in rama and mother sita right who is she lakshmi herself huh? nobody can be a more chaste uh, woman than mother sita right so lakshmi is a is known for her chastity now here lakshmi herself is saying 518 23 ೂಹಿತಿ <laughs> O oh, infallible one your lotus palm is the source of all benediction therefore your pure devotees worship it 
and you are and you very mercifully place your hand on their heads i wish that you may also place your hand on my head for although you already bear my insignia of golden streaks on your chest he has a golden belt on his chest um, representation of lakshmi devi i regard this honor as merely a kind of false prestige for me you show your real mercy to your devotees not to me of course you are the supreme absolute controller and no one can understand your motives purport okay in many places the shastras describe the supreme personality of godhead as being more inclined toward his devotees than toward his wife who always remains on his chest in shrimad bhagavatam 11 14 15 it is stated natathame priyatama atmayonir na shankarah na cha sankarshano na shrir naivatma cha yatha bhavan here krishna plainly says that his devotees are more dear to him than Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Lord Sankarshan, the original cause of creation, the goddess of fortune, and he, or even his own self. Elsewhere in Shrimad Bhagavatam 10.9.20, Shukadeva Goswami says, Nemam virincho na bhavo na shrira pyanga samshraya prasadam lebhire gopi yattat prapa vimuktidat. Is this Shukadeva Goswami? The Supreme Lord, who can award liberation to anyone, showed more mercy toward the gopis than to Lord Brahma. Lord Shiva, or even the goddess of fortune, who is his own wife and is associated with his body. Similarly, Shrimad Bhagavatam 10.47.60 also states, Nāyam śriyonga unitānta rate prasāda svaryo śetām nali nagandha ruchām kutonyāha rāsot savesya bhujadanda grihita kantha labdhā śishāmya udagād vrajasundarīnām The gopis received benedictions from the Lord that neither Lakshmi Dev nor the most beautiful dancers in the heavenly planets could attain. In the Rasa dance, the Lord showed His favor to the most fortunate gopis by placing His arms on their shoulders and dancing with each of them individually. No one can compare with the gopis who received the causeless mercy of the Lord. Not even the heavenly girls, and not even Lakshmi herself could compare with the gopis. And Shri Mati Radharani is the topmost of all of them. Just imagine if Lakshmi is so chaste, uh, like we will see in the beginning, I mean in the next paragraph, you see. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said that no one can receive the real favor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead without following in the footsteps of the gopis. Even the goddess of fortune could not receive the same favor as the gopis, although she underwent severe austerities and penances for many years. Many thousands of years, she went austerity, tapasya, to enter the Ras Lila. She could not. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu discusses this point with Venkata Bhatta, who is the um, uncle of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Right? Or father, father, sorry. Father of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. In Chaitanya Charitamata Madhulila 9.111 to 131. So here you see the conversation between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Venkata Bhatta. The Lord inquired from Venkata Bhatta. Your worshipable goddess of fortune Lakshmi always remains on the chest of Narayan and she is certainly the most chaste woman in the creation. However, my lord is Lord Sri Krishna, a cowherd boy engaged in tending cows. Why is it that Lakshmi being such a chaste wife wants to associate with my lord? Just to associate with Krishna, Lakshmi abandoned all transcendental happiness in Vaikuntha and for a long time accepted vows and regulatory principles and performed unlimited austerities. Venkata Bhatt replied, Lord Krishna and Lord Narayana are one and the same. But the pastimes of Krishna are more relishable due to their sportive nature. They are very pleasing for Krishna's shaktis. Since Krishna and Narayana are both the same personality, Lakshmi's association with Krishna did not break her vow of chastity. And he was right in this. Rather, it was in great fun that the goddess of fortune wanted to associate with Lord Krishna. The goddess of fortune considered that her vow of chastity would not be damaged by her relationship with Krishna. And actually, this was the reason why she could not enter. Because she wanted to remain chaste. Rather, by associating with Krishna, she could enjoy the benefit of the Rasa dance. So, in this way, she was thinking, if she wanted to enjoy herself with Krishna, what fault is there? Why are you joking so, uh, so about this? And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, I know that there is no fault in the goddess of fortune, but still, she could not enter into the Rasa dance. Okay, all that is, what you have said is right, correct, Nara and Krishna, same. Okay, she did tapasya. Then why she could not enter the Rasa Lila? We hear this from revealed scriptures. The authorities of Vedic knowledge met Lord Ramachandra and Dandakaran and by their penances and austerities, they were allowed to enter into the Rasa dance. But can you tell me why the goddess of fortune Lakshmi could not get that opportunity? You know, in the Rama and in the Dandakaranya forest. 
there were many rishis who were attracted to lord ramachandra as in in a conjugal love this is not some transgender thing this is this is spiritual relationship you know just like rupa goswami is rupa manjari is a girl in the spiritual world so like this so they were great sages and they were in the gopi bhav and they were having conjugal rasa with lord ramachandra lord ramachandra said in this life my relationship is only with sita next life i'll give you chance so next life they became gopis so chaitanya mahaprabhu is saying even they could after their tapasya they could become gopis and they entered the ras leela but your lakshmi what happened what is going on he challenged venkatbhat to this venkatbhat replied i cannot enter into the mystery of this incident i am an ordinary living being my intelligence is limited and i am always disturbed how can i understand the past times of the supreme lord they are deeper than millions of oceans lord chaitanya replied lord krishna has a specific characteristic he attracts everyone's heart by the mellow of his personal conjugal love by following in the footsteps of the inhabitants of the planet known as vrajaloka or golok vrindavan one can attain the shelter of the lotus feet of shri krishna however the inhabitants of that planet do not know that lord krishna is the supreme personality of god whereas lakshmi knows gopis don't care they don't give a damn whether krishna is a Uh, supreme personality of godhead or whether he is ruler of mathura or dwaraka king or how many how much money he has to maintain me do they don't care they just love him that's it unaware that krishna is a supreme lord the residents of vrindavan like nanda maharaj yashoda devi and the gopis treat krishna as their beloved son or lover mother yashoda accepts him as her son and sometimes binds him to a grinding mortar krishna's cowherd boyfriends think that he is an ordinary boy and get up on his shoulders in golok vrindavan no one has any any desire other than to love krishna the conclusion is that one cannot associate with krishna unless he has fully received the favor of the inhabitants of raj bhumi therefore if one wants to be delivered by krishna directly he must take to the service of the residents of vrindavan who are unalloyed devotees of the lord so she is in the swakiya madhurya ras uh, taking krishna as the husband whereas gopis headed by shrimati radharani parakiya you know there is a परव्यसनिनी नारी चैतन्य महाप्रभु रोट दिस वर्स इन क्रिप्टिक फॉर्म टू रूप एंड सनातन गोस्वामी परव्यसनिनी नारी व्यग्रापि गृह कर्मसु तदेवास्वाद यत्यंतर नवसंग रसायनम इफ अ वुमन इज अटैच्ड टू अ मैन अदर देन हर हस्बैंड शी विल अपीयर वेरी बिजी इन कैरिंग आउट हर हाउस होल्ड अफेयर्स बट विद इन हर हार्ट शी इज ऑलवेज रिलिशिंग फीलिंग्स ऑफ एसोसिएशन विद हर पैरामोर and he just wrote like this no other explanation roop and sanatan go some is understood how we should perform our duties in this world we may be carefully doing everything but our mind should be always with krishna uh, although this is a example is like opposite example but actually this is the most chastity the most chastity otherwise how lakshmi devi could not match radharani's chastity all the top most chaste women in the world in the in the in the history vedic history cannot compare to mother sita and mother sita or lakshmi cannot compare to shrimati radharani this is radharani's supreme chastity and by her mercy we can at least become chaste to krishna to become a proper devotee of krishna without having unchaste thoughts now we are unchaste we can't chanting krishna's name our mind is going a million places we cannot focus in nothing you know this is our current situation so um let us pray to shrimati radharani of course there is so much that can be spoken about shrimati radharani she has millions of qualities 25 of them are chief which attract krishna all these things are there but i want to touch upon this topic that the supreme chastity of shrimati radharani and actually nobody comes close nobody and this one last verse not last last three verses what is that 1030 28 the explanation is shukadev goswami if he mentions radharani's name he will go into ecstasy 
so but parishit maharaj had a deadline in fact he would be dead <laughs> the actual deadline so he had to finish the bhagavatam for parishit maharaj and therefore for the service he did not want to want his ecstasy to interrupt him and therefore he did not utter the word radha but he, in this way he mentioned her name anaya radhito nunam bhagavan hare rishwaraha yanno vihaya govinda prito yam anayadraha certainly this particular gopi has perfectly worshiped the all powerful personality of godhead govinda since he was so pleased with her that he abandoned the rest of us and brought her to a secluded place now you imagine lakshmi could not enter rasleela that means the gopis are way higher ramya kacha dupasana vrajavadhu vargenaya kalpita so chased the gopis were and krishna even abandoned them but radharani could not he took her alone how much more shil vishana chakravarti actually this is just before we go here uh, before i forget this there's the other thing where the accusation is of krishna um stealing the vastraharan leela where he stole the gopi's clothes while they were bathing in the yamuna and asked them to come before him naked now oh what is this what is this this is all immoral 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 but again whether we wear our clothes or not krishna can see us naked completely <laughs> let's be, i mean krishna cannot see our uh, inside and outside and everything we are completely nanga in front of krishna understand you have zero covering i mean our x-ray already co- can go into our body and see the bones we are fully covered with skin our bones are exposed to the x-ray if x-ray machine can do that krishna cannot see through our inside and outside our mind our intelligence are you fully nanga subtle body gross body everything is nanga <laughs> forget it so what is it then what is that leela then that leela is that actually krishna is paramatma in everybody's heart so it is a reciprocation of krishna because they prayed to katyayani katyayani vrata we'll come back to this verse you see here katyayani mahamaye mahayoginyadhishwari nandakopa sutam devi patim me kurute namaha iti mantram japantastah pujam takruh kumarikah this was the prayer of the gopis each of the young unmarried girls performed her worship while chanting the following mantra o goddess katyayani o great potency of the lord o possessor of great mystic power and mighty control of all please make the son of nanda maharaj my husband i offer my obeisances unto you now <clears throat> krishna became more than their husband because they were actually eventually married off to you know so many other <clears throat> men but krishna still wanted to fulfill their desire so he asked them to come naked because only a husband can see a woman naked his wife naked he has the right to see so krishna wanted to reciprocate to let them know that he has accepted otherwise he can always see everybody naked hmm? so this is his reciprocation just like in the beginning of bhagavad gita arjuna did not ask for krishna's counsel arjuna was giving counsel he was telling what is morality he was explaining and he got bewildered with his own statements and then he finally said you know what i'll become your disciple you be instruct me now when immediately he said that now i am the shishya steham i am no more your friend sakha i am your shishya then krishna became the perfect guru immediately he chastised you fool huh? what is that 211 ah pragnavadam sa bhashya se gatasu na gatasu sa nanu sochanti pandit you think you are big pandit pandits don't uh, lament for the subject matter you are lamenting what are you you are not pandit you are a fool immediately guru that's what he does first he chastises so immediately he reciprocation his reciprocation is perfect just as we ask ye yatha mam prapadyante tam sathaiva bhajami ham so to just let them know that he accepted them as a husband he did that leela so we can never accuse krishna of these things or radharani of these things it is an offense going back to that see here shri vishnu sakrati thakur explains that the word aradhita refers to shrimati radharani he comments the sage sukadev goswami has tried with all endeavor to keep her name hidden but now it automatically shines forth from the moon of his mouth 
that he has spoken her name is indeed her mercy and thus the word aradhita is like the rumbling of a kettle drum sounded to announce the, her great good fortune so <clears throat> in fact the word aradhana comes from the word radha she is the per- personification of aradhana worship she nobody can worship krishna like Ra- shrimati radharani in fact it is said that she does not repeat the same dish twice when she is cooking for krishna that much i mean actually he doesn't need our food radharani is there cooking for him <laughs> why he needs our food he does not need so everything that he does is for his reciprocation with us so in when he is showing his mercy to us to accuse him it is like you know when somebody extends his hand to help and you bite the hand that kind of nonsense gratitude we have towards krishna krishna is coming here saying sarva dharman parityajya surrender to me uh, are, uh, how dare he say like this how proud is he we accuse krishna actually he is doing that for our he doesn't need to come and hey, surrender he does not need us uh, we need him so when he does this thing i, I accept you know patram pushpam phalam toyam he not beggar he is not hungry but he accepts for us so krishna does not op- operate on the principle of necessity he operates on the principle of reciprocity he reciprocates with us mm-hmm. and that too for our benefit so let us all take shelter of shrimati radharani through shri prabhupad again rupa raghunath pada hoybe akute kabe ham bujhavo shri jugala priti without the six goswami's mercy we cannot understand chaitanya mahaprabhu and radha krishna so we can't even try to go to radharani directly who here huh? yesterday eating meat today radharani have some you know some semblance of decency we will go through the acharyas there is a proper channel hmm. Hmm. otherwise it is mayavad if one thinks that one can directly approach krishna that is also mayavad you know prabhupad explains this so just like nanda maharaj yashoda maya you know they are directly serving oh i also want to become nanda maharaj i also want to become you know one of the ashta sakhi please this is all mayavad they are as good as krishna they, they cannot be replaced and they cannot be duplicated they are there we can only become in their footsteps we can follow so and that too through the das 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 anudas in the proper method <clears throat> so let us take shelter of shrimati radharani through the guru parampara especially through shila prabhupad and um, if she allows if she you know request krishna that krishna please take him krishna cannot reject this is a shortcut krishna cannot reject us if she says please take him so our thing is to please shrimati radharani prabhupad said you keep you know one disciple asked i find that radharani is always in a dancing pose she always looks like she's dancing prabhupad said keep her dancing it is a business to keep her dancing if she stops dancing you are finished <laughs> so please make sure that means in other words how to keep her dancing that means what that means we have to serve krishna nicely so that shrimati radharani is satisfied so that she will recommend us to krishna otherwise we have no hope hopeless so all right i'll stop here जय श्रीमती राधा रानी की जय श्री राधा अष्टमी महामहोत्सव की जय श्री प्रभुपाद की जय हिताय गौर प्रेमानंदे हरे 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 कृष्ण